Another edition of the Behind the You podcast. <laughs> We're in studio. That means it's uh, we got a big timer with us. Jeremy Shockey is here. Welcome. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks no, for I appreciate me. you coming in. Um, so let's just get into it. How did Larry Coker find you? Uh, uh, well, I believe, uh, you know, Ivan had a back surgery and uh, they were scrambling for a tight end. And um, I, I think he was, he's from Oklahoma originally, where I'm from. And uh, I guess uh, he heard about when I was playing in junior college and he stopped by for a practice. And uh, I know Bubba Franks just left, declared for the draft. And I think Ivan got surgery. So, and Robert Williams, I think, had surgery. So there was really no tight end on the roster. And, um, Found me in Oklahoma at a practice, and he offered me a scholarship on the spot. On the spot. On the spot. And when did you commit? Pretty much on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much on. I was very blessed. He was from Oklahoma, and Coach, uh, you know, Davis was from Oklahoma, so it was a good connection. Funny how the world works, right? Absolutely. So, what, like, if, if, if Miami doesn't come into the picture, like, what would have been next for you? Oklahoma, I'm sure. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. OU, absolutely. And you ended up at Juco How? You know, I, I, I wasn't the biggest or fastest kid. Um, uh, a couple well, schools you're pretty are big. I don't like. Yeah, I, you know, I was just going through a growth spurts, but I, I pretty much told every other school I was, you know, I wanted to go to Oklahoma, and when Oklahoma didn't happen, I kind of burned the bridges. So if anybody's listening out there, <laughs> don't burn the bridges. It worked out for me though. Absolutely. Oh, burn bridges with everyone you said no to. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're now you're. So you said you weren't the biggest, but your goal was to play D1 football. Like yeah. that's what you wanted. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got you. So you committed sight unseen. Did you know anything about the University of Miami? I knew the two head coaches from Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I knew the location. Um, I did some research on it, and it was, it, uh, you know, yeah, unseen. I remember getting in the truck. It was kind of like an episode of uh, Beverly Hillbillies. We left Oklahoma in a truck, and we all drove down to uh, University of Miami for the first time. Well, it's funny. You, uh, I wanted to ask you about that because there's a little more to that story, right? Not, you didn't just drive down. You, you packed as if there was nothing going to be here for you. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. My family packed a lot of food and snacks and everything. And, I thought uh, you brought a mattress, too. Brought a mattress. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you were like, it was like literally like you were moving. I thought I was going to go to a house off campus, and I ended up having to stay in the dorm room for a year. <laughs> not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing at all. So you, you, the family come. That's a, what a two day or that's a two or three day or yeah, two, yeah, absolutely. I remember getting to Florida. I'm like, oh, we're almost there. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so what's a, it's Ada, mm-hmm. Oklahoma. Yes, sir. What's it like growing up there? Uh, big football town. You've seen the movies like Friday Night Lights. Yeah, it was like that. Same thing. Town shuts down for football. Uh, Ada Cougars. Um, yeah, shuts down. Um, just an oil, old oil town that's uh, about 20,000 people. Um, now you go back, it's like Las Vegas. They have casinos and they have... Oh, really? Everyone's, yeah. got, now, right, yeah. everyone's got casinos. Everyone has it. So, uh, yeah, it was a very conservative town. Uh, it was, you know, blue collar. Opposite of kind of like the Miami right. scene. Right. What was your... Did you have like a welcome to... Not, not the team moment, like a welcome to the city, like this town. Like, were you, in, were you in like culture shock? Yeah, I remember going to the Grove for the first time and oh, uh-oh. kind of seeing the first homeless person in my life and everything and seeing, you know... Go into the tavern and, and see. That was still the spot, stuff. right? Yes. Casey yeah. Jones has been on this podcast. A lot of guys have been <laughs> in that that have lived in the in in the tavern. Yep. Tavern, tavern, sandbar. Absolutely. Those are the spots. Those are your spots. <laughs> yeah. Off season, of course, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you said, really, like, you know, University of Miami, All American, first round draft pick, national, cha- all that. Never really what you dreamed. Of. Like, never. I assume you never thought that was where it was going to end. So what? Where did you think? How do you think it was going to go for you as you were growing up? I thought, you know, if I could squeeze as much out of football to get a scholarship, that would be, that's a great goal, you know. I never was a guy that had goals playing in the league or anything. I was kind of an unrealistic goal growing up. I uh, always looked at the people on TV and wanted to be in their position uh, in the NFL. But, you know, I knew I had to be better in high school and then that translates to college. And so it's a big process to make it to the league. I was... You know, one injury away from not making it. You know, basically, it's, that's how you got to look at it. So when you say you went through growth sports, because, like, what are you, I mean, what are you, a six, I imagine you're 6'5". Six six, but I was, you know, I, was, I went from 6, probably 5'10", to 6'2", in, in a matter of months, and I was so sore from my knees and my ankles, I could... Just you know, you mean gro- like the, the literal growth sports? Yes. So it was just, it was painful. It was, it was, it was awful. But, uh, you know, I think I grew another inch after high school, and... Um, yeah, my brother was an early bloomer. I was a late bloomer, so I just had constant growing pains. And, you know, I just, it was from a town that 
I, I did lead the state in receiving that year. I had 1,000 yards. I think I, I didn't want to go to small schools like a Missouri or, or a Kansas. Um, there are great schools. I just, I just you wanted to go to kind of Oklahoma or, or something different, and um, just it, it never panned out. Who was the coach at Oklahoma then? Uh, it was uh, Bob Stoops just came in I got at, the, at that time. Oh, right, because in 2000, yep. Right, with 2000, that should have been, that should have been yes. us against Oklahoma, <laughs> not Florida State. That was, I think Stoops went, yeah, and they won, they, uh, right. Yeah. He took over, and I think they had a couple scholarships. He decided to keep them, roll them over the next year. And, and you, you were recruited as a, I mean, I know you played tight end, but if you said you played receiver, did you know you were making the move? I didn't. That was the first time. I went from receiver to the tight end in Juco and never, you know, so. Kind of worked out. It worked out. You were on the front end of this whole transformation. Absolutely. That was, that was, that's what's cool about that is being kind of a trailblazer and, and being known to, to start the position that's actually cool now to play and, and, get, and they get paid a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, you're like, damn, I wish it would have like 10 years, I wish it was born 10 years later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they say you were a Gronk before Gronk. Have you heard that? Do you yeah, like, it's funny and because- how, and how do you feel about that? <laughs> feel old, but uh, <laughs> it is cool. I, I talked to him in the Super Bowl down in New Orleans and uh, he wrote me a letter when I was with the Giants when he was younger. And oh, really? I never personally saw it. He told me this story and- so it was cool. It's cool to be um, to be idle to these young guys that, that came out and, and Hall of Fame players. Like uh, it's amazing, you know. He's he's a really good guy. Um, wishing the best in retirement, but he's. I feel uh, like you guys would have fun together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you so single single parent, correct? I had no kids. No. No, 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 no. Growing oh, my up, mother. Yes, yeah. my mother. Yes, two boys. No absolutely. Kids. I had not, not that. No, no, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> no, no. Growing up, you were raised by your mom, absolutely, right? And yeah. you said so. She instilled hard work in you. How? Yeah, you know, she would work in her jobs. Um, you know, my aunt and uncle were real close as a family and everything. Just, uh, and, you know, on her days off, drive us around to baseball practice or, you know, baseball tournaments on the weekends. So really no getting time for herself. Always, you know, putting her time with, uh, with sports and everything in front. How were you, a good baseball player? I was okay. I was average. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Never liked the idea of getting hit with the baseball. No, that's not fun at all. But you get hit. Well, yeah, but you get hit by linebackers and safeties. Yeah, but just get hit in the baseball in the face or something, something different. You know, I think. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, so, um, the part you said about you know the late growth spurts, is, and you mentioned something about, and this happens, I think, with a lot of good players. Is there's a like people, if people doubt you, right, or you hear things like that fuels you. So did that fuel you as well? Yeah, you know, I I, I was just in a stage that, you know, I wasn't fast enough to be a receiver, and at that time. No one wanted to play tight end. Let's just be honest. It was just blocking, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, watching the tape of Bubba here, before I got here, I was never really a, a fan fan. I was, you know, I'd see Miami play on TV like everyone, but they would always play Oklahoma where I lived, you know, or Texas or somebody. Right. But uh, watching how Coach Chud utilized him and stuff, I mean, to be a complete player. He was a complete tight end, blocking, receiving, uh, to see that, you know, and – you know, I always thought, you know, I, Coach Chud always told me he, he had to work for that. He wasn't, Bubba wasn't always, you know. So coming here, Coach Chud had a lot to do with it as well, you know. Um, Garcia, Pete Garcia had a lot to do with it as me coming here. But, but you came in late, right? Yeah, I came in, yep. I came in. Uh, in the yeah. summer, I think. I came in after the, yeah, I came in. Uh, after workouts, after yep, all season. After all this, yes. What did you come in at? A, scrawn, a scrawny 6'4"? Yeah, a scrawny 6'4", 210, 215. Woof. Yeah. And that, you, uh, at that Hall of Fame speech, you said, uh, you said, you know, you're going for weigh-ins or whatnot, shirt off, 210, there comes DJ Williams, right? And you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, it was, it was amazing to see these kids come out of high school like they were with, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's, to this day, I mean, it's, it amazes me how the athletes keep getting bigger and faster and stronger. Uh, DJ was a specimen when you saw him with his shirt off. It was, it was scary to see him like that. Were you, was, there, was there any doubt? No, there wasn't doubt. You know, I remember. Like, was, this I remember right, calling, was this the right place? Like, did I make the right choice? I remember calling my mother and you know, and telling her and stuff. And she asked me, "You want me to come pick you up or whatever?" And I was, she said, "You can, you know, I'll pick you up. You'll be working at a gas station here in a couple of weeks." So, no, I was. It was no doubt. I was just surprised how everybody was a grown was a grown man. You a red shirt, right? No, no red shirt. I I played uh, judo and then you know, two years here. You, uh, that, you also said when you saw DJ that that was just the freshman, right? Then the rest of the team came in. Yeah, they have you. You come in as a freshman, and I'm obviously a year older. I was playing in Juco for a year, but I practiced with the freshman for a week, and I thought everything was – I was feeling good about myself, you know? And then they put you in the fire with Dan Morgan, Chris Campbell, and Ed Reed, Al Blades, and you, shh, that was, it was tough. So who helped you out? <sighs> uh, I mean – 
we had a cool class with uh, with guys like you know T.J. Prunny, Cal Cobia. Um, those guys were cool. Jarrett Payton. We always, you know, we had a we had a close group of people. Uh, some were older, some were were in our class, but um, I don't know who helped me out. Uh, I guess all the offense, you know. Dorsey was a big example. We'd always get extra plays before practice. Yeah, everyone after. always said that he would like, he was like a coach. Yeah, it was very easy to trans, you know, transition from any offense to him. Um, I got the pleasure of actually getting coached with him. It's how old I am. Is uh, when I played my last year for the Panthers, he was the he offensive was a, coordinator. Oh, was he? <laughs> quarterback coach. <laughs> he was the quarterback, quarterback coach? coach. Yeah. So he's like, hey man, you can't yell. You, you like, you, 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 there's no yelling at me, dude. <laughs> He was I mean, great boy, I, I can tell stories about you. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe not, maybe you didn't have too no, many he's, stories. He's he's a, he's a teacher, man. He, he he did great things with Cam Newton uh, his first year. But I already was he like he's he was extremely intense and demanding. Very. Is that true? Yeah, he was very OCD when it came to that. But that's that's all the great ones are, you know. Uh, from him to Drew Brees to to all the ones I played with are very meticulous, and that's just how they are, you know. He's um, he's a he's rare. Yeah, playing with him it made everyone comfortable. It was just. You know, you have guys trying to coach, and it comes off to be, you know, arrogant or like an asshole. But he very genuine, and it just comes natural to him. You know. And you said Chud was influential. How? In terms of you getting here, or just once you got here? Once I both? got here, you know, um, just how he coaches, his style of, of, you know, trying to make the complete tight end and everything. Um, he just a, a fabulous coach, great person. Uh, um, you know, I, I, if I if he wasn't here, I don't I don't think I would have had much success. You know, and always pointing to the film. Well. If Bubba did it, why can't you do it? Well, Bubba was 250 pounds, and, you know, there's no excuse, Jeremy. So he would always have – I'd always say something to him, and he'd say something back, very simple, you know. But uh, he cared a lot, you know, about making the real the position a true, you know, blocking and, and receiving position. So, of course, y you make a name for yourself that first year, right? Everyone, I don't know how many times you probably heard mm -hmm. Dorsey – we just call it Dorsey to Shockey. Like, we just <laughs> say that, and everybody knows what it is. But were you – did I read – were you hurt in that game? Yes, I got hurt. Uh, yep, I got hurt in, earlier in the game. Right, and yep. you sat out a bunch of. I sat out I, mostly the part of the game. Yeah. So yeah. walk, walk. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fill, fill, Give us some good details that no one's heard about, like either last drive conversation. Give us something. It's such well, an iconic play. Yeah, I mean everybody that, knows that it. whole season was a you know it was we get beat by uh, you know Washington and it was a long plane ride home, long look in the mirror. Uh, you know, Florida State comes up soon after. Um, I'm hurt. Uh, sprained my, my MCL in the game a little bit. Um, but end up finishing the game. But, I mean, I, it was – oh, man. It, was it 23 years ago? My just, mem yeah. My memory is – 23 years ago. Yeah, so uh, – 2000. I, I just remember October, it being – I think it's October. I it might be almost 23 years ago to like right. – A couple days ago. I think ago. it was last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I just remember how hot and unbearable it was, you know. Right, dude. Um, there, was n there was no wind in the stadium. Everyone was losing weight. I look over, Dan, uh, <clears throat> Dan Morgan's in the, uh, he's in the training room with two IVs, one in each arm, sitting there, full body cramp. Um, I'm hurt, obviously. I get hurt earlier in the game, and it's just not a good feeling, you know. But, um, you know, catch a couple of short passes, stop the clock. Uh, it wasn't like a play like designed all uh, that me. was that wasn't designed for you That wasn't 100 percent designed for me. I just saw coverage and um, I made it decisive and can always said make it decisive and you know stick with really your, is that, that's what he would say yeah stick with your decision you know it's, so I did and he made a perfect pass and the rest is history. you have that that photo's got to be somewhere in yeah. a house in an <laughs> office it's got to be somewhere absolutely. Two, two hands up in the air absolutely uh, well, it's, that wasn't the end though I mean it still came down to they had a chance to win it. So that now it's funny. I do remember. Um, I remember joking with Dorsey way back when. Hey, did you go out celebrate? Like, hot, celebrate? I got. He, I think he got. He went off to the hospital or something. He was dehydrated. I mean, it was that hot that mm -hmm. day. Did yeah. you do anything? Anything afterwards? You just go home and collapse? No, no I remember going to a, a, a frat party here. Uh, <laughs> I do, and I remember the people getting the keg and putting the keg inside the uh, the garage. And I was hanging out with Kyle Cobia and T.J. Pronti and and a couple other guys drinking beers or whatever. Good I reason. was exhausted. We weren't staying there long. It was a couple beers right. we left. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was one of the most unbearably hot, humid games that I've ever played in. Um, By the way, you mentioned Washington. So that was like that was it, one loss in your career. That was it. That was, that it. was a good run. It was a great run. It was a great run. Um, it was a long playing ride home. I didn't – it was very unsure, you know, myself playing the position and the team. I didn't – I thought every – we're going to lose every other game here. This is, you know, and uh, – What changed, you think? 
think, I don't know. I, I, it's that special sauce they say, it just comes up out of nowhere. I don't know. It just, we got on a roll and um, people started being accountable and on and off the field a little bit more. And I mean, we had all the athletes, we had the coaching, we had some good breaks on our going, going towards us sometimes at the end of the games. And uh, we had a great defense. I mean, we get up 14 0 and they'd have to play from behind and they'd be another turnover. So we would, we would only played, I think, that season half, I think, half. half Two quarters a game average. Right, right. From the right. By the end, you guys were you guys were Even crushing it. You played Penn State or someone, you're blowing them out forty to zero at halftime. Like you know, I want to go in and keep getting stats, but not. Nah, no. no, we get some guys. Right. Like <laughs> I remember towards the end of the year was back to back sellouts. I think what was it Washington and Syracuse or Syracuse somebody right. And you guys, I was like a hundred combined score was like hundred and ten to seven. Yeah. yeah Something was, ridiculous. But uh, I don't know. I think we had we we gelled together as a as. As off the field as we did on the field, it was it was a close relationship and uh, accountability part was definitely you know a factor. But um, it, it just everything went right. It was it was all the plays design were going right. The players were playing up to the standard. And it was just, did you ever seen athletes like that? Santana, Reggie, Andre, the the backfield not, like not, any, any I had never guys, seen that. Anything like that in Ada? <laughs> no, we had some good athletes in Ada, but nothing like that. Frank Gore, <laughs> seeing him come in as a freshman. Sean Taylor as a freshman. These guys come in, you're thinking, man, they're better than the you know the other guy in front of them. And um, to see Frank Gore hurt his knees in high school, college, pros, and still play. Uh, Eighteen, right? Eight, yeah, it's just it's amazing. It's my hat goes off to guys like that. He he deserves it. Yeah. Um, any doubt when you guys took on Nebraska? Was there any doubt heading into that game? No, I don't think so. No. Um, we're pretty dialed in. No doubt at all. Uh, no. no. I think Greg Olson has said the 2001 team – I mean, you played in the NFL. I don't, I don't love this conversation, but I will put this – that team was ridiculously talented. Greg Olson says it maybe could fare – in the NFL, thoughts? Yeah, there's some there's some really bad teams in the NFL, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know it's we we has definitely a talent and everything for sure. Uh, I don't know it's it's two different animals, you know, um, but there's a lot of guys from that roster that they ended up playing a lot of years, you know, a lot of Hall of Famers. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of Hall of Famers. So are are, are, you, are will you sign off on that the Miami is tight end you? Absolutely, yeah. I am. There's, I mean, if, if there's any other kid, I don't know, if I was a kid in high school now, this is where I, you know, I'd want to be, you know, your positions, your quarterback, you want to go to this school. If you're a running back, you want to go here. But definitely there's a, a lot of, a long list of them. And uh, I see kids this year playing really well. Um, yeah, I stress to any kid to come here. Uh, you know, you got at any disposal, you call Greg Olson, you call myself, you call anybody <laughs> uh, to pick our brain to see how we would do it. But um, yeah, great coaching. Um, I, this is definitely tied in you, know, the history, I think, for sure. Uh, what's the other school they were talking about? Iowa? I don't know. I, I don't even, I don't even, I, I have no consideration. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it is hard to, you know, to, there's, there's a couple second place ones, though, that are, there's a lot of tight ends that come up. Well, is that something you guys talk about in the, like, if you cross pass in the league, does that stuff no. come up? No no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Now, you, didn't you play, did you get a year with Greg Olson in the NFL? I played, we, I played with Greg in Carolina. Absolutely. And how was that? Amazing. Came in from Chicago. I remember, uh, you know, I, I signed there and I got off the plane and I heard the trade news. The Bears traded him. I caught, we had the same agent, Drew Rosenhaus, and I said, Drew, should I, should I even? <laughs> I mean, they got Greg. Should I even be going here? I mean, I could sit out a year. Don't worry about it. Right. I'm about to ready to retire anyway. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, it's good. And um, didn't you guys, you guys like uh, combined for a pretty good season that year? If I... Yeah, Coach Chud was the offensive coordinator. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> Miami Dorsey Dor was there. Dorsey was the quarterback coach. Uh, it was no fun. wonder why you had a good. You don't know why you guys had a good year. Yeah, he was he was the only person who could have made me play that year. I think I was I was. Who's great. that? Coach Chud. He's really. Like, yeah. You were pretty banged up by then. Yeah, it was it was my tenth year. Going into my tenth year, I was just over it. <laughs> ready, ready, ready to get out. Now, did you play with Jimmy in New Orleans? I did. He must have been a rookie. I would they imagine. They drafted him. Yep. Mm -hmm. are you, so are you? I mean, it's I knew Jimmy when he played basketball here, um, and. Yeah, I'm trying to get him on the podcast. We're still trying to work that out. Maybe, <laughs> Shocky, you can, maybe you can guilt him into it. But Jimmy, you better he, come on this podcast. Thank you. Um, but you look at his numbers, right? They're ridiculous. And I was thinking, I was like, it's crazy. He's going to be in a, he's a Hall of Fame NFL tight end for a guy 
that played one year here. Yep. When you saw him in New Orleans, did you have an idea that it would happen? I didn't, but I remember coming in and Coach Payton pulled me to the side and said, what do you think about this Jimmy Graham kid? And I said, oh, he's raw. He's, you know, he's got a year. This is why he was in camp. This, this is why like, he was at UM, yeah. Oh, why was he at UM? Before he, he drafted? Probably, before oh, he I got, got drafted. You. So this is about halfway during the season. I think Coach Payton had an eye on him. And then he came up to me before the draft and he called me. He started asking questions. And so I didn't, I didn't really know Coach Payton asked questions about everybody. So I didn't know. But they ended up drafting him. And uh, when Coach Payton called me, he was ecstatic. He goes, this kid's got so much upside. Uh, the Dolphins were trying to draft him. Bill Parcells was trying to get him that year. We got him. Uh, you know, take him under your wing, do your stuff. Um, and he came in. Uh, I mean, explosive. I, I knew. I mean, his size just right, right away, and his speed is is a mismatch. You know, he ended up hurting his ankle and sitting out half the year, or getting hurt half the year, or whatever. But uh, man, him and Drew had a connection. It was it was great. It was beautiful to see. Um, it was amazing how they did the offense together. Yeah, he he was. Uh it's amazing what he's done, in the, and he's still going. Still going. He's still, <laughs> back in New know, Orleans. Back in New Orleans. So, uh, we, yeah, we wish Jimmy well, man. It's a uh, <clears throat> great guy. Um, tons of upside, though. You know, that probably benefited him not playing college football so much. His body's probably, body's right? probably fresh. Um, you know, but it's, you know. How fr is that frustrating for an athlete when your body just kind of goes? Yeah, you really can't do much. But, look, right. he was fresh all those years, and he gets hurt his first year in New Orleans with an ankle. Doesn't get hurt again for those seven years, eight years. Plays every game. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That's how it works. You mentioned Gronk wrote you a letter uh, that you didn't get. But Will Mallory's been on this podcast. And there's a story about, did you meet him when he was a kid? His dad, I think mm -hmm. his dad in the league is in a, a coach. Dad, his dad was the special teams coach for the Saints. This, okay, for the yeah. Saints. So you met him mm -hmm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you remember that. I do. I remember, yeah, Coach Mallory. I remember him bringing his, yeah, I do. And then you got to run into, I think it was at Paradise Camp. He's getting recruited. I think you were coaching. You got, yep. you guys, yep. you got to kind of reconnect. And you got a good memory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he was on the pod. This, yeah. Well, I, have, I, I do my, I do my, don't. I didn't this, remember that. Look, no, no. Jeremy, it's not my memory. I actually have to, it's, it's right here. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take, don't give like, me wow. too much credit. Um, yeah, he came in. It was a, a, a Paradise Camp. Um, yeah, he was in, he was in younger in high school and, um, just meeting, you know, just meeting him, talking to his dad and stuff. His dad's a Michigan guy, so we figured we we're gonna lose him to Michigan. But uh, <laughs> glad he came to this UM. Uh, great player, great kid. Uh, he had a ton of upside. I, I, I knew he was very talented coming into high school and stuff. Um, you know, I, I always wish they would utilize him a little bit more. You know, I think he's he's an exceptional player. And he's gonna have a you know bright future in the league for sure. You um, I watched your Hall of Fame speech at UM, and you were really. It seemed like you were really touched, like and humbled by that moment. Were you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was like one o'clock in the morning at that time. <laughs> oh, you were the last I was one the up. Last one up. I was. No, oh, well, you, so you were just tired. I was tired, but I was definitely humbled. Um, you know, coming here, um, I always like I, you asked earlier. I wanted to get an education, and I really didn't think about football. But when the light bulb went off, when I knew I could compete at a high level, uh, the light bulb went off, and I became OCD and, and with it. And in what way? Just doing things extra more, uh, working when you were more, here? running more. Yeah, just trying to be, be that guy. I was always considered not the fastest guy, the biggest guy, not pushed, not the Gatorade Player of the Year, kind of you know pushed over in the corner. So I always had something to prove, um, you know, to myself and to to others. So it, that worked out the best for me for sure. Coming um, coming in as an underdog like that, you know, I couldn't imagine being a Gatorade prep, prep Player of the Year and. Ninth having grade, that, you know, having that kind of pressure. Yeah, the expectations you got to feel that, you know, and it's I don't these now it's a huge business where they do all the rivals and stuff. Yeah. So you got a bunch. Or even of, on the like if we or if we go back and would, would Jeremy Shockey even appear on a rivals list back no, then? No, <laughs> no, no. So when did it hit? When did it? When did it hit you uh, that that when I guess once you got here, uh, mm -hmm. when did it hit you that hey you I can compete at this level? Uh, it was I remember the one play. It was. Uh, when the when the vets came in and I had to go against Dan Morgan, it was like a seven on seven play, uh, catch a real deep pass, re reach over and grab it from him and catch it. We both fall down, uh, and he didn't help me up. I got up, <laughs> but he did tell me when I got up. He goes, "Man, keep working. You're going to be good." And that's all you needed. And I didn't. Well, I, I thought about it and I said, "How does he know? You know, he he just got here. He doesn't know me, and you know, I, I guess he watched." tape on all the rookies and stuff really that sounds like something Dan would do yeah we have a bunch of guys like that on the field that really love the game so uh 
he was a great teammate. He was a warrior to play with, man. Um, just an amazing player all the way around, you know? Yeah. So I guess, probably not perception, but, you know, I don't think it's any secret. Like, you know, you, who doesn't like to have fun, right? And the time in New York and all that kind of stuff. And the only reason I don't bring it up to talk about that, but you mentioned something about, the, you, you touched on this OCD thing about working out. And I had, I had, I think I had read something like when you were here, um, like you would get up at five in the morning. Like, like I actually want to dive into that a little bit. Like, cause I don't think that part gets told as much, <laughs> right? About you. What exactly were you doing? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. You're talking about which I don't know which story you're talking about. In no, just in general, like that that you would the amount of work you put in over and above, like waking up early, working yeah, late, like I, this. I, you, you you kind of oh, self pronounce your OCD, yeah, once, like about once everyone gets better. like breaks and they go back home and they kind of relax or whatever. I would go back and I would have high school trainers or, and gym guys. Um, we would do summer, you know, we would do summer strength here and we'd go back for two weeks and I would do another strength class and and, and, and speed class and stuff. So. I would go above and beyond. I try to, to be naturally fast. I'm not a naturally fast twitch person. Um, so it took me a long time to work on that. Uh, weight wise, I would always, you know, do extras as, as much as I could. Um, if it's prison workouts, uh, in the hotel room or whatever, you know, just to try to, you know, not an edge or anything. I just, I just, I don't know. I just, when you want something so bad and I knew that I'm going to, do as, I'm going to try as hard as I can. If I don't reach that goal, okay, but, you know, I'm going to just give it everything I can. And, and it worked out, man. It was, uh, I saw a difference right away. I quit, I quit growing. The growth spurt stopped, and I got muscle, and I got bigger and uh, faster and stronger. And it was, it was just, it was an addiction. Was it to be? To be to better. And you look right. yourself in the mirror every day and say, okay, I'm three pounds heavier, and I'm, you know, this much stronger and this much faster and more and more. It's funny you say that. My, my, my son's 13 years old and he just started doing some training over the summer. And uh, the trainer was like, he's going he's gonna to start wanting, he's going to start wanting to come more. And literally, like after two weeks, he's like, hey, dad, can we go? See? Dad, yeah. Right? He like, saw the body change a little bit, mm -hmm. whatever. And I was like, man, he tagged that beautifully. But I guess that's what it's like. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Last couple things. Mm -hmm. um, the game-winning catch against Florida State, the touchdown against Nebraska, or the Super Bowl touchdown with the Saints. Who, uh, what do you get asked about more? Uh, um, probably the touchdown for first Florida State. That's pretty iconic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially down here for sure. You know, in New Orleans, obviously the touchdown, right? In New Orleans, but definitely in this region, uh, the Florida State catch. Okay, and. Um, I saw a picture with you. You had like six rings on your finger. There's like a, I, I know Super Bowl and championship. I, I couldn't place the other ones. Oh, it was uh, a high school state championships. Okay. Uh, the two Super Bowls. Oh, right. You got the Giants one, right? Yeah. The Hall of Fame. And uh, it's a nice collection. <laughs> there was one more. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, oh, it was the uh, Big East ring. So we oh, had right. a, that, that, Sugar Bowl ring. I forgot about the Big East. <laughs> Sugar Bowl ring and then the Rose Bowl ring. That's what it was. You weren't on Bourbon Street for the Sugar Bowl, were you? Uh, no, I got snowed in at that trip. I, I, there was a huge winter storm, and I couldn't fly out. I missed two days of practice, and it was a debacle. But I, I heard everything about it. <laughs> you might have been there. You, you Maybe I've been, the, been there later on. You might have been in the mix. You might have been in the mix. <laughs> um, uh, last thing, it's just for kind of fun. Just, yeah, again, I, I try and find unique things where I can. So just going through your Instagram, and you posted a picture from way back. You're hanging out with Kid Rock. So I guess, was there ever a moment in your life because of what you've accomplished, being Jeremy Shockey, an NFL player, where you're hanging with someone, and you're just like, holy shit, I can't believe this is my life? That was a pretty surreal moment, because uh, it happened unexpectedly. But, uh, yeah, um, man. Uh, backstage, the Rolling Stones. That was pretty cool. Being Where? hanging out in Giant Stadium. That was cool. Uh, That's pretty cool. Jimmy Buffett hanging out with him. Jones Beach was pretty cool. And then hanging out with New Orleans. I, 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 I'm a music guy, uh, but yeah, yeah, I love music. And um, I knew a guy when I was playing for the Giants. He would, he was the biggest uh, concert guy, and just give us great tickets, and it'd be fun. But and all, ah, man, I, I don't know. I'm going to get back to you on that one. All Kid right. Rock's hard to beat, though. That's a, that was a good one. And how'd, you, and how'd that come to be? I was, uh, after the first year, I was with a buddy. He owns a horse ranch in Puerto Rico and went there and hung out. And 
Kid Rock was there with Pamela Anderson, his girlfriend at the time, and uh, we ran into him at the hotel and just had a good time. That's it. And, all right. Jeremy, <laughs> I pre Jeremy Shockey, I appreciate you stopping Thank by, you. telling your story. That, that, that You just got to know, we don't do this all the time. Appreciate it. We don't come into the studio all the time, so. All right. You, Jimmy, you know, if you're out there listening, Jimmy, come on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look right in that camera. Jimmy Graham, you need to come on the podcast. <laughs> Jeremy, thanks. Welcome.